What is going on everybody? Zionic here, and in today's video we're going to take a look at Lantern, and specifically the differences between a Water Gun Lantern and a Charge Beam Lantern. Now before we get into the video, I have a few things I want to talk about. Firstly, thank you guys so much for all the support that you have given me. Um, the past couple weeks have been amazing, and creating content for you guys has been an, a lot of fun. Um, so thank you for all the, the likes, comments, um, asking me questions, and subscribing of course, so thank you so much for all the support. Now the other thing I do want to talk about is if you're living in the United Kingdom, and specifically more geared towards the area of like the Cambridge, London kind of area, um, I am going to let you guys know at the end of this video where and when I'm going for my Tempest Cup tournament and I'm inviting you guys to come and battle with me and just enjoy a fun day of um, competitive battles. Now let's get back to Lantern. Lantern, guys, is going to be amazing for this tournament and it's going to be one of those Pokemon that you will see on almost every single team. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, the moveset you should go with and the differences between the two optimal movesets. Um, we're going to show you guys how he's ranked and we're going to talk about what he's good against, what he's weak against, um, so you guys have a good idea of how to use a lantern or how to defeat a lantern. Alright guys, moving into lantern. And lantern um, is a electric water type Pokemon, so it's going to be weak to grass and ground, which are some Pokemon you're going to see, or the types you're going to see in this tournament, like Tropius and the water ground meta. Um, but with lantern, even though he's weak to those Pokemon, he's got a lot of positives. Um, and you can roll one of two ways with this fast move, which is either going to be Charge Beam or Water Gun, and we're going to explain that later in the video. Um, but the ideal second charge moves, you're going to want to have Hydro Pump and Thunderbolt. Those are going to be, I would say, the must-haves. Um, if you don't have enough Stardust to unlock a second charge move, go with Thunderbolt, um, but I would highly recommend getting both. So if we go ahead and head over to Pokebattler.com, and we're going to go ahead and head down to the PvP section to check out the rankings for the Silph Arena Tempest Cup Tournament. We're going to take a look at the top 24 well-rounded overall ranked Pokemon. Lantern, number 7. And it says Water Gun Thunder, um, but I would, I would highly suggest Thunderbolt um, because it's right underneath it. And you're going to be able to get Thunderbolt off a lot quicker. Um, so that is how Lantern ranks. Alright guys, go ahead and jumping right into the simulator portion of um, Lantern. We're going to go ahead and head over to pvpoke.com where you can simulate battles and we're going to fight against Tropius here. Um, and Lantern's going to lose really hard to Tropius, but something to note guys, um, you see that Charge Beam um, can charge and move so fast that you can get the Thunderbolt off. And it did half of Tropius' health, which is huge. There's a lot of potential there, especially if you're um, stuck in that fight. He may not shield thinking he's got the guaranteed win. You can take away half his health. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at Abomasnow and see how he performs. Now, um, you can get a Hydro Pump off versus Abomasnow and do quite a bit of damage to him too. Um, it's going to do 63. So... Obviously, you're going to lose um, because Razor Leaf is just going to hit you so hard. But with Charge Beam, you can get off a move before they um, before they take you out. So if we move over to the top right, these are going to be Pokemon where if they shield once or twice, you're pretty much going to lose. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and simulate this versus Marsh Stomp. And we see that basically you're going to have to shield twice if you want to win. And if they shield... Um, once and you shield twice, you can come out on top, but if they shield two times, um, you're done. Um, and that's because uh, of the Mud Bomb spam. You're going to be taking super effective damage from that Mud Bomb and Mud Shot. And if we look at a Water Gun Marsh Stomp, it's a lot more favorable. You can win the 2-2. You can win the 1-1, one, one, the 2-1. Um, so that's something to figure out when you're facing your opponent. You want to find out if he has Mud Shot or Water Gun. Um, because that'll make a difference. So if we go ahead and move on to the next Pokemon, we are going to take a look at something you guys will definitely see. Um, maybe not on every team, but it's going to be in the tournament lineup, and that's going to be Steelix. So if we simulate, Steelix can smash a Charge Beam Lantern really hard. The only way a Charge Beam Lantern wins is if you shield twice and he doesn't shield at all. Um, 
that's because of those earthquakes that he can get off. Um, he can get off quick moves of crunches to burn shields, and then he can get that earthquake off, which is going to just devastate you. Um, but you do have access to Hydro Pump, which can do um, a lot of damage to Steelix. So I'm going to go ahead and move over to Altaria. Now, Altaria's Dragon Breath is just going to do so much damage in this tournament. Um, and like you guys see here, the only way you win is if Altaria doesn't shield, um, which is why this category is basically the one to two shields you're pretty much going to lose or trade. Um, and as you guys see, just Altaria with Dragon Breath is going to wreck um, a Charge Beam Lantern, especially if Altaria shields once. Um, so that's just something to note, especially if you're using the Altaria and you get against a Charge Beam Lantern. Know that, you know what, I can shield once, keep my Altaria pretty topped up. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move over to Magneton. And the difference between Magneton is huge with Water Gun and Charge Beam, so go ahead and take notes here, guys. Magneton, um, you can win if he doesn't shield at all, which is huge because you can get that Hydro Pump off. But if, he, if you guys go 2-2, two, two, you're going to lose pretty badly, and that's just because he's going to be spamming so many discharges that it's just going to eat away at you. Um, so we take a look at the 2-2, two, two. it's just tons of discharge spams, um, so there's nothing you can really do to stop that, it's going to do 75 damage um, to your health, so that's just going to take you out really quickly, so um, probably aim to try to do a hydro pump, if they don't block it, then you know you basically just won that fight. So Frostlass, with Powder Snow and Avalanche and Shadow Ball, we're going to go ahead and simulate this fight kind of see how the lineup works and it's definitely more favored to lantern um, and you win the 2-2 two -two. so if you want to invest um, basically mirroring shielding you'll win um, but frostless can take you out especially if you decide not to shield because that avalanche is just going to hit so hard guys um, so we see the hydro pump doing 98 damage um, to the frostless and you can get to it pretty quick because you do have charge beam <laughs> So we go ahead and go down to Celio. Um, probably one of the biggest reasons why having a Charge Beam Lantern could do very well. That's because he's just going to handle them. Um, Celio with Powder Snow, Body Slam, Aurora Beam. You can win the 2-2. You can win pretty much all matches except him charging twice and you decide not to charge twice. Um, so we look at a Water Gun um, Celio. And it's even better. So if they have a Water Gun Celio, you can shield once and win. Um, so just be prepared to try to figure out what Celio, um, what moveset they have. Most people will probably have Powder Snow because it does charge that Body Slam very quickly. But you can win pretty much all the trades because you have Charge Beam and Thunderbolt, which is going to be doing super effective damage to that Celio. So if we head down to Charizard, um, and this is a Pokemon that's going to differ based on what fast move you have. Um, if we notice that Charizard can win a few fights here, um, he can win the 01 and he can win the 02, um, but you can win the 2 2, and that's because you're just going to be spamming um, those Thunderbolts that he can't really stop. And you're not going to be taking, you're going to still, still take a decent amount of damage from Blast Burn, still 73, but not overwhelming. Um, so that's something to note. Now we're going to head down to where Charge Beam Lantern really shines, and that's going to be against a Skarmory. <laughs> So Skarmory going to be weak to Electric and Fire. Charge Beam Lantern is going to wreck Skarmory. Um, the only way Skarmory has a chance um, is going to be a tie, basically, on the O2. But overall, you're just going to destroy it. It's a GG. Um, and against Lapras, it's the same um, type of matchup. So if we give it Ice Shard, Ice Beam, and Surf, and Simulate, you're going to win every single match. Um, and that's just, that's crazy strong, and it could be a game changer. So if we look at Water Gun as well, we simulate, we're going to see that it's still the same, you win every game, but it's a closer um, game if he shields twice and you don't shield. Alright guys, moving on to Water Gun Lantern. Um, and as you guys see, the dynamic has kind of changed. Um, Magneton has now gone down to very beatable. Um, and Altaria has kind of gone down to more manageable. Um, so if we go ahead and simulate versus Tropius, like always, Tropius is going to beat you up. But notice you don't get a Thunderbolt off. You'll die 
before you can get a Thunderbolt off unless you decide to shield and then get the Thunderbolt. So if maybe Tropius has no health left, no shields, you got one shield, you do have some help, um, but you won't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tropius at all. You'll do some okay damage, but basically you want to try to get out of there or just let Lantern go down. And if we take a look at Obama Snow, um, we're going to see something very similar. However, you can get a Thunderbolt off on a Bomb of Snow with Water Gun, um, which is huge compared to Tropius. So if you don't see any Tropiuses in your tournament, know that with a Bomb of Snow, you can get a Thunderbolt off just before you die um, if it's an even fight. Now, if you have more energy, obviously you'll be able to get it off sooner. But if we look at Steelix, Steelix is going to be still hard to manage, and that's because of that Earthquake. So you can win um, if you go deep into shielding. So if you shield twice, you can win no matter what against a Steelix um, because your water gun is just going to do a ton of damage to him. But if you don't shield that Earthquake, you're done. So if we watch right here, um, you know, he shielded um, once. So you're able to finish him off with water guns while doing Thunderbolt, which really doesn't do a lot of damage. Um, so that's just something to note to watch out for those earthquakes because they will basically one shot you. So if we go ahead and check out another Pokemon, which is going to be Whizcash, which is a Pokemon you'll probably see. Um, some teams definitely may be running it, especially with Mud Bomb Blizzard for the coverage. And we find that it's it's really hard to beat a Whizcash. Um, you're gonna the only way you win is if Whizcash doesn't shield and you are forced to you have to shield. Um, otherwise, you're going to lose in all other scenarios. So if we take a look at how you win, it's with that Hydro Pump, which is going to do 105 damage. So if a Whizcash doesn't shield that Hydro Pump, you can really turn the tide there. Um, so we take a look at Quagsire. Quagsire is going to be pretty similar, um, where you can win if he doesn't shield. So if you can get that Surprise um, Hydro Pump off, you can really swing the battle because then you can win. But... Um, if you don't shield the Earthquake, 171 damage. That's just ridiculous. That's more damage than most Pokemon in this tournament have health. Um, so that's pretty much going to near one-shot your Lantern. So we go ahead and take a look at Frostlax. It's going to be pretty similar um, as last time. Um, so we're going to go ahead and give Frostlax the moves you'll see most likely in this tournament. And if we take a look, you, you're very favorable um, across the board, but um, if Frostlass shields twice and you don't shield twice, um, you're going to lose. So definitely um, maybe follow the shielding when it comes to that. Otherwise, um, you're going to lose the trade, but you do have um, a lot better odds versus a Frostlass um, when it comes to Water Gun Lantern. Now if we look at Altaria, and Altaria is kind of moved down to a Pokemon that's more manageable when you have Water Gun. Um, and it's it's not that much better though. It's, it's literally, if they shield twice, you're done. Um, so Altaria is still going to be a heavy counter to a Lantern because it's going to force them to shield just because of the raw damage coming out on Dragon Breath here. Um, so... As you guys see, the same thing is going to happen with Celio. If you have a Water Gun Lantern, it's going to go from really dominating it um, to to if you lose, um, you'll lose, I should say, if they shield twice. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at Celio. We're going to look at the Powder Snow Celio. Um, and if we take a look, you win um, all the matchups other than Celio shielding twice. And if Celio shields twice, he keeps a lot of his health. Um, but if we look at this right here, you get that Thunderbolt off. Body Slam isn't going to be hitting you that much, but Thunderbolt's going to hit him very hard. Um, so that's just something to note. If you're a Celio and you know you got a Skarmory on your team and you're facing this Water Gun Lantern, it may be worth investing two shields to guarantee that win so that your Skarmory can kind of have free reign. So if we go ahead and move to Magneton, um, which it didn't bring it up, but that's okay. We're going to click on Magneton, um, give it Magnet Bomb. And if we simulate, remember with Charge Beam, it was pretty hard to beat, but with Water Gun, it flips. So you can beat it in, in most of the scenarios, um, especially if you shield once. Just shield one of those discharges um, because it's going to do 75 damage to you, and you'll be able to beat that Magneton. 
that legacy magnetona i should say so definitely a big switch there um, when it comes to water gun probably the biggest we've seen yet and moving on to the next pokemon we're going to take a look at lapras and this is where some direct counters kind of change um, before with Charge Beam, we completely dominated the Lapras. Um, with Water Gun, Lapras does have a chance to win, and that's in the, if you sh don't shield or you shield once and the Lapras shields twice. Um, but that doesn't mean that that Thunderbolt won't be doing a lot of damage to Lapras if they decide not to shield, they best, or if they, um, um, they decide to only shield once. Um, so that's just a big difference, and with Skarmory, it's gonna be about the same. Um, because that charge beam super effective damage and charging thunderbolt isn't going to do as much damage um, to these two Pokemon. So if we look at Skarmory, he can win on the O2, uh, but you are still very favorable. So you can still cover these guys with Water Gun, um, but it's not as dominant as a charge beam uh, Lantern is. But this is another big difference, Charizard. Before, um, you had a chance to lose, now you don't. You beat up Charizard all day long with Water Gun. So that's Water Gun and Charge Beam Lantern. And I'm going to go ahead and leave this infograph up here for you guys. So feel free to pause the video and screenshot it just to get an idea of how things work out. But the main takeaways you can get from this is Water Gun um, seems to be more kind of general coverage. And it can help you win the battle against Magneton. Um, but Charge Beam is very, uh, very directed towards countering Celio, Skarmory, Lapras. So depending on what your team needs, based on what comp you have, um, you could go either way. If you need some more water gun coverage to help you against Steelix, to help you against Charizard, to help you against Magneton, go with water gun. But if you're pretty covered there and you just really need to dominate that Celio, that Skarmory, that Lapras, go with the Charge Beam. Um, so yeah, that's Lantern. Alright guys, I hope that helped you guys out and helped you figure out the key differences between a Water Gun Lantern and a Charge Beam Lantern where Water Gun Lantern is more kind of a general coverage with being able to have hard counters to a few specific Pokemon and Charge Beam is more um, narrow in the fact that it really destroys those Pokemon that it's very strong against. Um, so those are the two differences, both are great. But it's obviously um, up to you how you want to use him and how he fits on your team. Now, the tournament. Um, I'm going to be heading down to a town called Rayleigh. And don't, <laughs> don't get mad at me if I pronounced it wrong. I'm American. So I obviously call um, cities here wrong because you guys speak a different English. Um, but right here is the place I'm going to and it's going to be on the 24th of March so that's um, the Sunday um, after community day uh, at 10 a.m. and it's gonna be at a pub um, so obviously there'll be food and drink um, and I'm hoping that a good group of people are there and we just have a blast having battles against each other and I would love to see some of you guys there so like always guys thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one